Yo, what's up everybody? This is Mike Lapon from Mike Lapon Silent Assassins and this is another edition of our Storyteller series. And uh, today we have my partner for the last six years or so, singer extraordinaire, Mr. Alan Tecchio is here with us. Cheers. Cheers, man. <laughs> what do you got? I got milk. I got nothing. <laughs> but I want wine. I'm going to get it before I leave. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm so stoked to be here. I've been watching your videos all this time, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. So thanks for inviting me. It's oh, great. dude, yeah. It's totally I mean, great. Everybody who's a fan of the band is going to love to ha love it that you're here. <laughs> I love that I'm here, for whatever yeah. that's worth. Great, great, great. Um, well, let's see where we should start. I mean, um, on the New Jersey, New York rock scene in the 80s, I knew who you were. You probably didn't know who I was, but I knew who you were with Hades and Nonfiction. They were really, really big bands at the time. And then Watchtower. Um, but I don't think I actually start talking to you till about what, 2010? Yeah, ish, ish, yeah, something like that. Maybe before because Seven Wishes was our connection. Jack Frost and Seven Wishes was definitely where it started. Mm -hmm. I remember you asking me in Long Island when we opened for Armored Saint on a, like a Wednesday night or something. Which, by the way, took me like three or four hours to get home because the George Washington Bridge was like shut down for construction. Crazy! Oh, but you asked right. me that night to like sing with you uh, and the solo stuff that you were working on. And uh, that's kind of the origins of it, for sure. Yeah, because I heard you on one of those Seven Witches, Seven Witches records. And I forget what song it was, but it was just like, it had everything in it. It had the grit and the power, but it also had the melody. So, I mean, you could obviously sing, you had the power, and you were, you know, you sounded like a psycho. And that's, that's <laughs> thank what you, we, thank you. And that's what we wanted. Um, so let's talk about the Horror of Babylon record. It's been out for like almost three months now. I mean, so now that you've had time to sit with it, what do you think of it overall? Well, and I, this might sound like I'm kissing your butt, but I'm just being honest. Like, every record seems to elevate. So, like, the first record was great, solid power metal, like, killer. I got to go for it. You allow me, thank you for that, the ability to kind of bring melodic stuff and ideas to the table without being too constricting, you know what right, I mean? Like, right. no, you can't do that. You're always <laughs> like, just go for it, bro. And when I'm allowed to go for it, I just sing better. Right. So the first record that was great, second record elevated another level, which was really cool. Right, right. And... You know, I know there's people out there that write music where it's like, oh, my next record's the best. And of course, everybody thinks their new record is the greatest thing ever. Right. But in fairness, every record has absolutely elevated to another level. And the third record did the same thing. So I sang better with you. I got to feel your vibe better just from working with you. And you know, I always give it my all, but you got to be passionate about the stuff you're doing, you know? I agree. And you wrote passionate stuff. And to this day, right now, Telltale Heart is still my absolute favorite song I've done with you because it's just so intense. The bass playing is, of course, over the top, but it's smart. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just gratuitous, fast bass playing or whatever. Right. It's a really great construction of a song. Oh, thanks. And I'm lucky enough to sing on it. And the singing parts you wrote for me were very difficult to execute, but I executed them. And I think I did, I'm, I'm very proud of what I did vocally on it, you know what I mean? It did take a little bit of time, but you wrote parts that challenged me, mm -hmm. and I love that. Because I don't want something that's just super easy to do. Yeah, I mean, I think overall, I mean, in my opinion, uh, definitely one of the best vocal performances overall. Thank you. Thanks. Um, now, something the audience probably <clears throat> is not aware of is like how we actually work together. So what we'll do is, after I uh, construct the song, I send Alan a scratch vocal for every song. Now, I can't sing to save my life. So, you know, Alan will get some, you know, Alan will put in the uh, CD of the demo, and he'll hear something like, you know, where it's all like uh, falsetto. So, it'll be, uh, you know, you'll sound like, Beware the eye <laughs> So... He has the Herculean task <laughs> of trying to make sense of it. So when you get, you know, when you get this, like, it's where I sound like Mickey Mouse. Yep. 
how do you take that and translate it into a manly metal so, track? So, I appreciate you being so self-deprecating, but that melodic uh, guide that you give me is huge. <clears throat> and why I adapt to it so easily is that that's how I do it. Because I will sit in my room, my little vocal booth at home, when I'm working on my own music and stuff, and I'll sing in falsetto and just experiment with melodies. You know what I mean? Like, And it'll all be not me. I'm not going to blow my voice out for something I'm just working on creating. So you create that for me and give me an awesome template. Yeah, it might sound a little silly to the average listener that's right. like, whoa, what the heck is that? <laughs> but you're providing the melody, the direction, the lyric, the cadence of the lyric. You know, that's very important, like how the syllables fall, like where all that's supposed to be right. is a part of the lyric and a part of the vocal. So you give me the really, really good core to work with, and then you would allow me on top of that to just expound upon that. You know what I mean? Add whatever I do to it, you know. But you give me something great. I know it sounds silly when you listen to it. Like, if we played it right now, it'd be like, what the heck is that? <laughs> but without that, I would be blinded. You know what I mean? Right. I would be blind going into the song. Like, well, you want what, where, how does it go, what, you know? So it's critical that you do that stuff. Okay, no, that's cool. That And that makes total sense. For sure. Um, now, another thing, besides a lot of songs that are really heavy, really fast... You know, I also delve into things that are maybe something that Alan doesn't, uh, maybe isn't used to all that much, like ballads and uh, Celtic style stuff. So when you get that, um, how do you approach that stuff? Because I would imagine you don't do it that much. Honestly, I think the only disconnect with me and you is the lyric stuff, mm -hmm. because the singing is the singing. Right, so I could be singing about you know, political or socio-political stuff that I would normally write about, or what you're writing about, you know. Right. But the vocal approach is still core to all of that. So uh, I love it, and I and I'm challenged by it. Like the oath, perfect example. The oath, which is on the second record, or is that on the first That's record? On the first. Album. That's on the first album. Very difficult song to sing, <laughs> yeah. but really cool and. Honestly, I just want to do stuff that elevates my ability to sing, mm -hmm. and your stuff elevates me. It just does. Like, it makes me challenged to do this stuff. It's not some easy vocal anybody can knock out in two seconds. Right, right. Like, I got to right. sit there, and I got to work with that, and I got to practice it, and I got to get ready, because when I get in front of the mic in front of Mike Romeo, when he's tracking me, like, I don't F around. Like, I got to make sure I'm there, you know what I mean? And you give me that ability to do that, because... There's a little bit of a template there, and you give me the freedom to expound upon that, and it makes it fun for me. And if you don't enjoy what you're doing, whether it's your day job or your singing or whatever, it sucks. Right, right. And that segues into something else, because when you come down and record, you know, Alan is prepared. <laughs> he is prepared. He knows what he's going to do. He has it all laid out, and it's, you know... It's awesome to have someone like that because you just come down and he'll knock you out probably like two songs in a full session. And that's doubling the vocals, harmonies, you know, the whole kitchen sink. And the harmonies are not easy. You know, it's, it's you know, very well thought out. Well, you so, write some very cool harmonies, <laughs> <laughs> which I would not write myself, which makes it a little bit not arduous, but it's definitely a task. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I mean, I think we work really, really well together. Um, I got a question for you. <laughs> when was your like first like real tour with a band, and what was that like? It was atrocious, but it was a great <laughs> learning experience. It was Hades, 1988, through Europe, with a promoter from Belgium who didn't speak any other languages except mm -hmm. Belgian. Wow. So we would roll into these little towns in Germany, asking for directions without <laughs> knowing German. Wow. It was so horrific. <laughs> but, you know, it was a great learning experience. And the band actually broke up on that tour because it was so difficult. Oh, my God. And there were also underlying drama things, which we won't get into. But essentially, like, we're in a van, which had an exhaust leak. So it's pumping, like, exhaust into the van. We're sleeping on top of luggage in the back of the van. <laughs> 
I mean, it was nasty, brother. It was not like a tour bus with like nice accommodations was and it hotels. Like, uh, winter or uh, no? It was like spring, summer, okay. spring into summer, mm -hmm. and uh, great shows. But I mean, we had. I mean, as you might know, the Europeans they drive seven to ten hours, no problem, to see a show. Yes. You know I mean, they're into it. And we had Germans showing up, and actually not just Germans, but it was in Germany. People from all over, a lot of Germans, saying, "We drove seven hours to get here. We've never even heard of this town." <laughs> like, how are you even playing here? And we're playing a little pub in a farm village. You know what I mean? Like, it was one of those tours. But a great learning experience. Sadly, we broke up on that tour. But uh, that was my first experience on the road. Oh, no, that's awesome, man. Would it be great if we could get the Silent Assassins over to Europe for a tour? It would be so killer. I think it would be awesome. It would be, um, it would be great to get with, like, a band, like... Maybe like a band like Saxon or Accept or something yeah. like that that kind of that kind of fits right. Totally, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. And uh, just so all you guys know, uh, during the pandemic, I did write a whole fourth album. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I and, knew you would. And it's probably going to be more. It's probably going to be the heaviest one. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I was pissed off. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't like yeah. staying home because sure. all I do is eat devil dogs and cheese its all day, and <laughs> I don't like that. Um, but Alan Tecchio, I am so happy that you were here. I'm so happy you had me here, brother. Alan Tecchio is on our album, Mike LaPon's Silent Assassins, Whore of Babylon, on Silver Lining Music. Silver Lining Music is so awesome, you dude. You said we were doing great stuff for it's you. It's the best label on the face of the earth. Um, when we post this, we'll have the, uh, the correct way to get the record. We'll have all that info for you. Um, you could even go to MikeLaponSilentAssassins.com. Um, but we'll get you all hooked up. You could hear Alan Tecchio on this record. I personally think it's his finest hour. Thank you, bro. And, uh, and what shirt did you wear in the, uh, pictures? Was it a... Uh, it might have been the Dracul song, or it might have been... Oh, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. If you want to see... I think he wore a Vlad the Impaler shirt. I think you're right. I think you're so, right. if you want to see Alan in a Vlad the Impaler shirt, <laughs> definitely buy this. And I think we'll call it for today. Thanks again, bro. Cheers. Ooh, cheers. Thank Love you for you. having me, bro. Love you, too. And so we'll, glad we made this happen. And we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Behold the beat.